There's an art to preparing, presenting and cooking meat, especially game well, meat. Or... Today we will have plenty on which to feast our eyes. Let's start with the butcher and game dealer. Cheerio, have a nice weekend. Kai is catering for a wedding three miles down the road and has sourced some locally shot roe. Our game sales have only gone in one direction and that's, and they, I mean, it doesn't go up in leaps and bounds but it's a steady growth. John Murray and his staff know their onions and as a result so do their customers who see the value in free-range locally sourced wild meat. For, for, for £2.50 we're selling a pheasant or four for a tenner and you go to a supermarket you can't buy a flipping broiler of chicken for a fiver which will probably upset your tummy. Absolutely cheap meat. We also with our um, pheasants and partridges, mainly pheasants, we stuff them. We, we, we bone them out and stuff them with game pate but it's a meal for two or three for a fiver. Kai leaves with three whole row for the wedding guests at the Rumbold Farm venue in West Sussex. So what's he going to do with them? Create quite a spectacle is the answer. Cooking on fire is very uh, primal. It's a social thing. People, you know, drinking beer, having a chat, talking about whatever, the sport, life. It's a celebratory event, round of fire, our wedding, meat cooking. It's, you just can't beat it. It's definitely these and fallow deer. It's going to take five hours to cook the roe. It would take seven for a fallow, so he needs to get cracking. We've got one of these uh, roe deer here from John Murray's. And what we're going to do is mount it on the cross. It's an Argentinian method. We, uh, we call it asado. Asado type cooking. And it's traditionally done with a lamb. But these guys have actually cut it for me. Usually I'd cut it myself, so I'd cut it down the pelvis um, all the way through, and they've actually butterflied and slipped it myself. So you're not cutting all the way through, you're cutting just through the bone, so you, so you still have some meat on the other side, but it allows you to open up flat for flat cooking. So the fact that it, it goes flat like this, we'll put the cross on it, we'll mount it on with, um, with wires, and then it will be flat basically, so it's even side of cooking. Then after a certain amount of time, you'll turn it around and cook the other side. So, I mean, one of these will do about 20 people, between 15 and 20 people, and then we've got another two of them as well. So, we'll have about 60 portions between the three roe deer. Is this commercially available, Kai, or do you have to order you, you made these? No, no, no. Uh, this is actually available from my mate Tom, Tom Bray, um, from Country Fire Kitchen. And he makes them. Uh, he lived in Argentina for a while, he now lives uh, near Salisbury and uh, he has a, quite a good business, does, does all the kind of gear. Um, we do kind of similar stuff really, but I specialise in game and I just buy it from him. So that's what we call the, uh, the cross. So you've got the point at the bottom there which is going to uh, the holders and we go shoulders down. So I kind of measure, I measure it up like that, so we wire it on. And then this will go shoulders down because the shoulders would require a lot longer cooking than the haunches. The haunches can be a little bit pink, but you try and chew on the shoulders and you'll be chewing for days. So we, we concentrate more of the cooking on the shoulders so they start to break up a bit more. And then we try and leave the haunches up top so they'll still be a little bit pink in the middle. It's hot work on a hot day, but everything is looking good and under control. If you put your hand there for 10 seconds, 10 between 10 and 12 seconds, it's kind of a, a low to good heat. And then if it starts getting like eight, five seconds, and the closer you get, the, the, the quicker you'll cook, like five seconds will be really quick. So uh, obviously take your glove off when you do it, otherwise you're not gonna feel the proper temperature, but we're gonna, rack the, we're gonna put them all out and then we'll uh, maneuver them where we want them. With the row in place, it's time to make the marinade glaze. We constantly baste the, uh, the deer to keep it moist, um, put some flavour into it. So I've got some red wine, which works quite well with venison. Um, got some olive oil here, got some rosemary, some salt, some water in it. And then we just literally just flick that on with a paintbrush. So I'm using molden sea salt, and you ask any chef, molden sea salt is the salt to use. It's one tool that you need when you're brushing on your marinade 
on the road here, and that's the uh, the trusty paintbrush. 75 mil, is that one you choose? Yeah, 75 mil, just washed it. Um, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> washed off the turpentine and some of the paint off it, and then we'll slap that on the deer. So you're just gonna paint it on and just, so that's, get that kind of, the salty, oily kind of layer on there. You've got a wine that gives it the, the, the base and marinade flavour. And the more this cooks, the more the skin's going to bubble, colour, you know, kind of crispy and brown. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Delicious. It's, well, yeah. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Every time a wedding couple books us, they um, pay a £500 deposit and then that entitles them to a, a tasting session in our woodland kitchen with four other couples. And then we put a new little taster for them. So one of those is the pigeon breast. And before those tasters, a lot of the couples wouldn't go for pigeon breast because they've never had it before and they just think after they tasted it, it really has changed their mind and they absolutely love it. So the pigeon breast today with the mango salsa is, is a bit of a winner. As well as choosing venison, the wedding couple have also gone for wild boar and pigeon as part of the menu. Ones. This means that more than a hundred guests will be eating game today, maybe some for the first time. With only one chance to make a first impression, Kai is doing the game industry proud. The whole idea of wedding is to, to celebrate and get everyone together. And that's exactly what this type of cooking has always been about. So the food's on display for the guests when they come. Wow, look at that meat that's cooking. And that's kind of what people like to see. I mean, look, people come in now looking straight over. Oh yeah. <laughs> looking straight over at the fire. Um, catches their attention straight away. So like we said earlier on, that's that theatre aspect. And more and more people want that for their weddings because it just adds to the day. It makes that day that little bit more special. For more information about yeah. Kai's business, Game and Flames, go to gameandflames.com. And if you want to buy some lovely venison, why not drop John Murray a line? JohnMurrayButcher.co.uk.